Hey guys, welcome back. My name is Joe Ellis. I'm a commercial wedding and portrait photographer in Dallas, Texas, and today we're talking about my 10 initial thoughts on the using the GFX 100S at a wedding. Let's get into it. Okay, so yesterday was my first wedding out with the GFX 100S, and I wanted to get back with my initial impressions, 10 thoughts that I've had, uh, now that I've had time to think about what happened and how it went uh, with the GFX 100S. Spoiler alert, the camera did really well, um, and I don't have anything super negative to say about it, but I did wanna give some thoughts on some things that worked really well, and some impressions on different uses and um, you know, functions of the camera. So let's get into it. The first one, uh, this camera does not slow you down. And I think that is so critical to wedding photography. Um, I had it out mostly shooting family portraits and couples portraits at the wedding. And I have to say that there was no difference in speed of working, of reviewing, of um, focus or anything like that during that time of the day. And I think to be a wedding camera, that's a critical bar that you have to hit. And I would say that after doing this, that there's absolutely nothing that would stop me from using this at any other wedding, because from a speed perspective, it's just not gonna slow me down. I think you could, number two, I think you could probably shoot a whole wedding on two GFX cameras. The thing that you'd be missing the most, the thing that would probably be the hardest for me, as uh, principally as a documentary or photojournalistic wedding photographer, is that there's little micro moments that happen within the major moments on the day. For example, if a bride and her grandfather are having a moment and you would normally shoot four or six or eight photos of that moment, you're gonna get half as many frames from a GFX as you would from a smaller, faster camera like an X-T4 or an OMD. And I think that's really important to note is that um, even though the camera is pretty quick, uh, those little things, those little nuances, those when you might shoot 10 or 12 or 15 frames of something, you're just gonna have less to choose from overall than you would with a smaller format. And I think that is really the principal difference and why I'll still always be shooting some smaller format cameras at weddings. Um, but whenever I am out and I'm directing and I'm coaching a couple and I'm watching the dress and I'm lighting and all that kind of good stuff, that is when the GFX would, does an awesome job. It doesn't slow me down at all. And it wouldn't make any critical difference to the outcome of the photographs. Okay, number three. Um, <clears throat> woo. After working the wedding reception um, with the GFX camera, I'm gonna have to add one autofocus mode to my repertoire of tricks. Uh, the zone area AF is really important when I was working in low light trying to track subjects when they're dancing. I wanted to put some time in to kind of see what would work. And I would say for like uh, walking photographs, recessional photographs, um, even an exit, that uh, you know the wide area tracking works really well. If you're just trying to pick up the couple and they're fairly isolated in the frame, a wide area tracking works really well. But if you have a crowded dance floor and you're just trying to get the camera to track whatever's under the autofocus point, the zone area AF worked much better. Okay, number four, Fuji Color is no joke. Um, after working through these files and just applying the ProNeg H profile, to all of them, you're gonna see what are some out of camera JPEGs. And I think it's doing an outstanding color with, um, outstanding job in color with skin tones. And that is something that I think is really amazing. And it's not about, for me, necessarily 100% accuracy. It's about pleasing skin tones. And I think that between that and kind of the way it handles the whites in the image, it's just doing a fantastic job at creating really good looking images of people. So uh, a lot of these photographs are shot with the 110 millimeter wide open and a couple of set with the 32 to 64. Let's take a quick look at about five frames that I took with this camera and then we'll get back to my points. Okay, so first up here. Now, a couple of things about this particular wedding that are interesting. This was a daytime wedding, so uh, I was working in really harsh light. This is noonday sun, so that added a little complication to what was going on. But that being said, the camera handled everything really great. So this image was shot with 110 millimeter F2 at F2, and I think it just did a fantastic job. I'm not a kind of person who 
really, uh, you know, believes that shallow depth of field is the, uh, you know, the best tool all the time. I don't think it's required for professional portraits. I honestly think that uh, it's a bit of a crutch a lot of times for photographers who are trying to get rid of backgrounds rather than finding ways to work with it. Sometimes you can marry up the two where you are uh, working with a shallow depth of field and really paying attention to your background. And I think that makes for a little bit stronger image. So here we're kind of using a, some trees to make an arch for them and just kind of working the, um, the scene that way. Um, this is that really harsh light. I love the depth of field in this image. I love the um, way it's handling the whites and the way it's handling the highlights. It's just doing a fantastic job. Okay, the next image here, this was just one that was shot um, you know, at the altar. And in this case, this was the only image that I'm gonna show you today that was using a strobe. I had an AD200 with a shoot through umbrella on it and was firing almost at one to one power, I think. This is the 32 to 64. And um, I love the way that the flash is kind of giving this nice fill in the image. And I love the way, again, that it's really working the skin tones. Um, I think it has a really nice pop to it. So I love this camera with flash. It just does a great job, really soaks up the light well. And again, those Fuji colors are really just impressing. Okay, this next image, uh, again, a little scene we're just setting up here, letting them be playful with each other. Um, I love all the whites in this image. I love the skin tones again. I kind of keep saying that, but awesome job. Again, with 110 millimeter F2 shot wide open. Okay, this is an important frame because this is when we were just playing around outside near the uh, getaway car. Just had a couple of extra moments to get these before the end of the night. And um, here they are kind of going through a little dance move just to kind of get them moving and having fun. And in this case, uh, you know, like this is a spin, right? So there's four or five frames uh, per spin. And I think that that's just really critical to note that the camera can fire that fast. Um, like I told you before, for documentary moments where those little things are moving really quickly and nuances are really important, um, I think that it's not quite as fast as those cameras, as the smaller cameras, but for portraiture and you have a minute to set it up and you have a minute to get your timing down, then I think that the camera is working really well. Okay, and then the last one here, this is a panorama of the um, ballroom. And I think what's really fun here is that typically speaking, if you have a 20 or 26 megapixel camera, for example, and you're trying to crop a, um, a panorama out of a scene, you're gonna lose like half of your information doing that. With a GFX file, if you go ahead and crop it down to panorama, you're still retaining so much detail. I think that that's really fun uh, way and an easy way to get these really great panoramas. And uh, from a guy who loved shooting some of this stuff back in the day on film, I love panoramic images to begin with. If you like the nine to 16 or even wider, you can shoot that with a 100S and do these crops and not worry about how much data you'd be throwing away in the final crop. Also, you don't have to run you know, six or eight images across to get it. You can take these in single frames. So if you are a person who really likes shooting square, or really likes shooting long panoramas, those 102 megapixels come in really handy as a way to maintain the quality of your file while getting the crop that you really find uh, fun and interesting. Okay, so back to my last six points. I'm carrying the camera all day, number six, carrying the camera all day is not a problem. Um, if you are a person who ever carried a Nikon or a Canon with a 24 to 70 and a 70 to 200, the GFX with the 32 to 64 or the 110 is basically the same thing. Um, I was using a hold fast moneymaker strap and that was keeping the weight, you know, really easily distributed on my body. And between the two, it's just not a problem. Number seven, SD cards. So I was a little interested in this. Um, I mostly use the V60 spec cards. So these are UHS-2 SD cards. They're Sony Tough cards, so they have the two rows of pins. But there's both V60 and V90 cards. I mostly have V60 because I just never really needed the faster cards. And I was wondering if the GFX 100S was going to be something that needed that faster card. I'm gonna say no at this point. Uh, I was shooting rapid succession of photos, reviewing the photos quickly, going back to shooting right away. The V60 cards, writing at about 150 megabytes per second, did a great job, didn't have any problems. So for right now, I don't think there's a gigantic need to make sure that I've upgraded all my cards to V90. I think the V60 cards work really well. Okay, number eight. Obviously, 102 megapixels is a lot of data for wedding photos. And so you have to ask yourself, is that interesting or, or important to me in my work? 
And uh, for me, I think it actually might be because I really love making big prints. And while principally speaking, this is gonna be even more interesting in the portrait side of my business, I do think at weddings there are times when you might wanna make a long, beautiful, giant panorama image, or maybe you want to crop an image severely in another way, or uh, you know you just wanna deliver really beautiful uh, family portraits, and you just want that dimensionality and that tonality of the medium format. Not to mention that if you, let's say, shot all your family portraits at horizontal, and then suddenly wanted to crop everything to vertical, again, that's where a high resolution camera can be really helpful. So for me, because I have it, I'm gonna be shooting it at weddings. I love the files it's producing, but I know it's not for everyone. So you really have to consider whether uh, the penalty you pay in terms of, of price and speed and whatnot um, you know, works out for you in the end in terms of your work. But for me, I think the GFX cameras are beautiful, amazing photographs, and I'm more than happy to shoot this camera at a wedding. And that's not to say that's my only camera. Like I said, still gonna have a smaller format for some things that they're actually better at than GFX and vice versa. Okay, number nine, high ISO is fairly incredible. I shot a few images of this uh, at the reception at 3200 and 6400. Uh, both of some dancing and some details. And I would say that, I mean, I think everybody already knows this, but they're incredibly usable. It's not a camera I would use for those purposes too often, especially the dancing photographs. But I will tell you this, and this was a daytime wedding, so I didn't really have a chance to test it. But one of the times when I'm really pushing ISOs is when I'm out, let's say, downtown Dallas at night, and I really wanna bring up the ambient light in the background. I might be working with a video light or something like that to kind of balance things out. Well, in those situations, I'm often up at those super high ISOs because I want a bright, beautiful background. I want a lot of the city lights to come up. And this is a camera that's gonna be able to deliver that quality in a way that I've never had before. So this is um, you know, a beautiful camera for all of those purposes and that you do not have to worry about throwing it into any type of lighting situation that it can't handle. Not to mention the image stabilizer. Okay, and number 10, battery life. Battery life and practicality after shooting a, you know, six or seven hours in a row um, is really, really good. Uh, I shot around 500 frames with this camera off and on over the course of the uh, morning and afternoon. And I shot it really hard for an hour or so when I was doing family portraits and couples portraits. Um, in the to total, it was like 535 images that I took with the GFX. And I still had more than half a battery when I finished. I had three bars left on the on my first battery. So I think that for anybody who's looking for uh, working these at events and things like that, um, one battery got me through this day with no trouble at all, and I didn't have to worry about it. So that's certainly interesting for lots of different applications, but the new Fuji batteries are uh, doing a fantastic job. So that's 10 points, guys, 10 things that I thought about after shooting the camera for the first time at a real wedding, and uh, some photographs that I wanted to share with you guys. So. Please hit me up with questions, comments, theories in your mind here for Fuji GFX at a wedding, and I'll see you all in the next one.